Hey, I'm Ken Whiten. I am the cinematographer for Appetite for Sin, and you are watching Appetite TV Quarantine Edition. All right. Well, how's uh, how's quarantine life been treating you? This is a nice forced vacation, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, of course, there's all the stress and all the, you know, crappy elements. But honestly, um, it's been a good, like, minute to sit back and relax and think about, like, everything that I'm doing with my career, you know? Um, yeah. Normally, when I, get, well, when I get a little gap like this, I just jump onto the next creative thing that I want to do and just fill my time with that. But then I have no time to actually stop and think, like, what's working, what's not? Right, you know what? What am I really wanting to right. invest in versus what do I do just to, you know, pass the time? So, what have you been doing to pass the time? Are you watching some horror films? Are you watching your things and seeing like what's working for you? Like, what what have you been doing? Yeah, uh, always watching, always watching, always consuming, trying to, uh, you know, constantly improve everything. You know, my own skill set as well as just, um, you know, now we live in. The golden era of TV and and TV can be so much more cinematic than it used to be. Um, so like I'm not really somebody that likes long form, you know. But like now I'm like oh, I'm really into long form because the cinematography is getting better and better, you know. More time yeah. is being spent there, right? Yeah. So you talk about you know you evaluating your career and seeing what you like, seeing what works for you. When I first met you, the very first project we worked on, you worked on, you were uh, our gaffer. You were, you know, taking care of all of our lights for us, and uh, it was a film we did called A Beautiful Place. We had Tony Moran and Robert Hughes in it, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, you approached me as, you know, the gaffer for it, and uh, so we started working together, and you killed it, man. Like, everybody always says to this day, the lighting was awesome. Um, but shortly after that, you had sent me a text message saying that you were, you know, you just bought a new camera, you were printing you know being a cinematographer and so you said that if i ever had any more else to be trying to do it and now here we are you shot you know the first scene of my very first feature film and you know you're uh, as soon as we get back on track you're going to finish this out for us and um yeah how has it how has it been taking that leap from gaffer to cinematographer i know you're still doing some of that yeah. um but how was that transition for you and why did you decided to go that route yeah any career transition is going to be tough uh but it's been super rewarding um last year i got to shoot a feature for some friends that um i've been a part of i've been attached to for over two years now and or coming up on two years right now um we shot it last uh august and, to september and, and it was just like the smoothest pro smoothest pro process just like all those difficult indie low budget struggles and stresses were just ironed out by like a completely uh unified crew like everybody knew either most of the people or someone else on the set and so it was like the way we moved was just so sync like synced and and um it allowed us to do stuff that normally on those low budget productions we don't necessarily get to do or spend that kind of time doing and uh man it was rewarding. it was so rewarding because it's just been a lot of the opportunities that I get uh, offered to me for cinematography, it's like they're they're good opportunities, they're fun, they're you know, but then there there's always the projects that I'm invested in that I'm like, oh well, this is what I'm spending all my time doing, you know. The minute you came to me with this script, it was like, oh my god, dude, like this is so like I love this, you know, like it's it's one of the <laughs> like these are the you know, these are the types of projects that honestly I've, I've you know continued to fight to get to. And now I'm at a point where it's like, I've got those and other jobs that, you know, like it might just be a little bit more straightforward and typical standard 12 day feature. We do this and, the, you know, and it's like, it's fun. But then there's those other ones that, you know, it's just been, I think it's been a really rewarding two years. The transition has been difficult for sure, but rewarding. That was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I, I remember one of the first things we talked about is uh, you say some of these projects are a little bit more rewarding. And I know you're a huge horror fan and that's one of the things you said to me at first too you're like i really want to do this woman because i really want to work on things that i'm passionate about and things that i love um so yeah have you been able to do uh much in the in the horror realm with uh, cinematography yeah i mean so that that film i was talking about in september that was a uh, like a mystery horror um so a, a good half of it was some pretty straightforward horror but the other half was you know more the slow tension building mystery and drama 
Um, I uh, just wrapped on a crime thriller that was kind of a little bit of horror in it. So just playing with darker elements in, you know, a more, I guess, crime centered film. But uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't been on anything horror related in the last two months. Um, it's been a lot of commercials. There's a lot of <laughs> 2020 was full of a lot of commercials right before everything halted. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So since you uh, since you kind of come from that world of both, you know, uh, lighting and cinematography, are you ever on set as like the, the cinematographer and the gaffer just drives you nuts? Like, do you ever look at them and be like, come on, man, like, I can do better than this? <laughs> you know, what I mean? um, it's weird because usually I get to hire my own gaffers. So they're usually lighting with sure, at least sure, the background sure. of how I normally sure. light. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, you know, that's that's a, if you go back to the transition conversation, right? Like sometimes I get on set and I tell production, oh, like my gaffers aren't going to be able to work in that budget range, you know, and they bring somebody that they know. And it's, you know, it's it goes back to what I was talking about, where the, you know, the ability for a crew to come together. Right. Um, I think that's one of the strong suits for what we had on our first day was that we, you know, mo a lot of us already knew each other. A lot of us are professionals that know what we're doing. But when you bring all those right pieces together, which is a, a huge compliment to your abilities too, dude, because you're just fucking great at organizing and getting shit together. So, um, Thank you. <laughs> but you know, it's like when you have that, when you have that trust with each other, when you have that secondhand nature, you know, I know that when we went into, you know, the effects stuff on the end of the first day, Joe had some questions about, you know, the lighting and it's like, well, yeah, there's definitely different ways we can do this. And we had the time that we were able to test those out. And I remember watching, you know, I see so many like, first time direct like not that you're a first time director but first time with your feature like where they don't get that kind of time right and instead we had that time and you were able to see like no 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 this still works this works right and because of what i saw joe was doing i was able to compliment his work as well and that's that you know sometimes we don't have that time so then you leave the day and you're like ah oh, man we didn't get it today right it's like we got something but it's not exactly what we wanted whereas like that day we pretty much got exactly what we wanted you know like we were yeah. able to yeah 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 really yeah. Speak and uh, so, so going back to when I presented you with this, with the script, um, I hadn't really told you too, too much about it. I'm like, here, check this script out, see if you like it, see if you dig it, and then we'll meet up and we'll talk about it. Um, so, what about the script kind of enticed you? I know this, the, the, it's kind of a wide range of different topics. It's a vampire, it's, it's a vampire film. There's that thriller element. There's that mystery element, and then there's just that badass women who are just trying to kill you know, to survive element. And so, you know, with something kind of, you know, that ranged out, like what kind of, was there anything that stood out to you that you were like, I really want to work on this or um, yeah, man, what about it? Maybe it's, maybe it's threefold. I think it starts with having worked with you in a gaffer to director relationship and then a photographer to creative director relationship with other stuff we've done. I know what you like enough from an outsider perspective and you know my style enough that like i knew that if you were going to ask me to read the script you were already like at least accepting of my style you know what i mean <laughs> so then when i look at it i read you know as i'm reading through it it's like okay right off the bat clearly this is missy like this is this is a role written for her to just kill you know um but then yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> it's like i also know where your um where, where your aesthetic is, I guess, you know, it's like, I know what it looks like when you're creating on on set, and then I've also seen what your projects look like after they've gone through full post. So I know what you want your visions to look like. And I think, like, without knowing too much, I just looked at the script and I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be really fast, you know, and it's like, and I, the more I thought about those things, I was like, this is going to be fun no matter what. So why wouldn't I want to do it, right? But then as I saw your approach to it, that was like, I think maybe where I go into like the third fold of that is you have here such a, a, an interesting dynamic that hasn't been played with in horror too much where we um, kind of get to see these team ups, you know, uh, and it's it's a it's exciting about just thinking where um, where a movie can go like that. Right. So then once you told me you had Joe on board, you know, like once you started listing these other things, it was like, wow, this is bigger than just a fun script you know what i mean this is uh a lot of opportunities for everyone to just excel and just kick ass yeah and um yeah so you talk about working with uh some of us in the past and 
you know, Missy was on A Beautiful Place. She was our hair and makeup artist. And she was able to make that transition as well from a hair and makeup artist to now being the lead actress in a, in a feature film and working with Robert again. And uh, one thing that I love to do, I'm not saying I did this for you or anything, but like I love when people are excited uh, about doing something different and going out of their norm. Because Missy, she's been doing hair and makeup for, she did that for a long time. And then you did your gaffing for a long time. And I really wanted to, like, I love working with people with passion who are like, this is what I want to do. I want to give this a shot because you guys are going to go out and fully, you know, do it 100%. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I really appreciate that. And when after you read the script and we meet up, we were just on the same page. Like Dude, I, was I was describing to you how it looked, the lighting, you know, just everything to the actors who I wish to play. In, and we were kind of just on the same page with it. And so after that meeting, I'm just like, Dude, there's like, there's no doubt this is going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, and we were, yeah, we were just connected from the start, which well, was nice. Well, that's the funny thing. You asked, me the que like, you asked me the question about the script and how I felt at the beginning. I got all these feelings, but every time, as a cinematographer, when you go in reading a script, you might have these really cool feelings about, oh, this is how I can use camera movement in these scenes, and then I can establish the actual cinematic language from those camera movements, and I can play them out, you know, like all the things that a DP's thinking about that a director should think about, for sure, but may not have time on low budget sets, right? Um, and so it's, you know, a matter of how we're gonna block that space out. How are we gonna use the best, you know, of our resources that we have? So it's easy to look at a script and be like, oh wow, there's a lot of potential here, but how much of it are we actually gonna get to do, right? And when you started telling me what your vision was, it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. You and I are gonna find whatever <laughs> we need to do in the middle ground to get to that. Yeah. And, and I felt completely comfortable you know, like sometimes I'll still attach myself to a project where I'm concerned whether or not the producing end of it is going to get taken care of. Whereas like with you, I know Matthew's going to continue to constantly pour himself into this creative image. And that's, I think for me, one of the most important elements of a crew member, right? I'm going to give you my time and my effort and all this, you know, um, all this effort, I guess, energy to this project. I want to know that somebody's helming it with the right kind of grace that it needs. And it's like, yeah, that when we were yeah, talking, absolutely. I remember visual references, like everything we were just right there on point with. So, you know, talking about our relationship and being on point, I want to talk about that day on set. Uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, yeah, I've done short films that, you know, like, our beautiful plays was the one day shoot film before that. But trying to tackle a feature film knowing that, yeah, we only shot one scene that day, but there's like 40 other scenes that we need to shoot and kind of just me going on set. I was very intimidated. You know, I've, I've worked with Joe. Uh, actually, no, what am I saying? I had the first time working with Joe Castro, who I've looked up to forever. So him being there, Robert Mukes, who is someone I really respect, and then yourself and being friends with Missy. Last thing I want to do is like seem like I don't know what I'm doing. But I, you know, I definitely had a little, a little bit of that going on that day. And I'll, you know, definitely admit that. But that's when I looked to you and I asked you for your advice. And one thing that I think works really well for our relationship is that, you know, I'm not someone who's just going to be like, this is what I want. This is what we're going to do. And that's it. Like you and I, you know, we have discussions about things. We sit down, we look at the shot list together and we really, it's a really great collaborative piece. Um, and I can't wait to finish exploring that for the rest of the film too. Uh, so, same dude. Yeah. That's the yeah. I mean, that's you know, I've, people ask me like, because I came into you know cinematography through stills. So it's like one of the things that I love about film is that co collaborative part right there, right? Like you and I have built a communication of trust and and knowing like we're both looking out for each other's back. Like you're looking out for the project's back, you know, first in some ways. But then, like, you know, the level of trust, too, right? Like, I remember when we got into it on that day, there was a... An, we were going to try and hang a light, and it was one of those things that it's like, this is going to take so much time, and it's going to cut into what we can do later, <laughs> that it's like, is this light worth it? And I just remember thinking, like, no, I think we got to lose this light, because we're going to get so many better shots if we don't have to worry about this thing. But then, you know, like, that yeah. that's what led us to, um, you know, having, having an easier time... Um, making it so stark when Missy comes out of that darkness, you know, like we were able to drop that. We were able to do those, those few technical things that, you know, on a small budget and small crew, uh, sometimes be challenging, but we, we killed it. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So I know it kind of took a while for the post process, um, the post-production process after we shot that day, but 
I treated that one scene, because uh, I knew we were going to use that to pitch this and raise money, but I used that scene as if we were fully cutting this movie. Like, we colored it, we scored it, we did all the sound, uh, all the sound mixing, and just made a trailer and made sure everything was perfect. So how did it feel uh, for you seeing something that you've done and something that we worked on together kind of come in full uh, full circle and just just to see where it was and how how it all worked out? Were you were you proud of it? Don't want to put you on the spot. No. Uh, but what do you think? What do you think when you first saw it? That, yeah, that one scene we did. I'm super proud of it. Um, I'm really proud of uh, again going back to like it's. You know, we were we were creating something to to sell an idea, right? Um, and that's go that matters in terms of so many things, right? Getting producers, all that stuff, but also just having a general interest in the project. And I think that's you know, this is to me, it's it's our first scene, but it's also an open door. Like it, you're you know what you're getting into now, <laughs> you know, like yeah, it's <laughs> this movie is what that first scene is. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> You know, there, there's no question about what direction it takes. You know, like, and I and I that part of it, uh, not of course not story elements, but just in terms of what the movie is. And I think that's what I got most excited about is after you've got the you know the sound and, and color pass and everything, um, and the composition, it just becomes this this piece that we've all put our time and effort into. And beyond just another you know fun project, again it. it it kicks ass right out the door and it's not going to stop once we get to the movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's always been my, my favorite part of horror films. That's something I always think that to me is like also important. Like the first like five minutes of any movie is the most important part. Like it needs to capture your interest. And that's that was my, that's why we opened with that scene. And yeah, like you said, there's a lot of bloodshed. There's a lot of cool things in this movie. But to me, that was just the perfect, like, all right, who is this girl? You know, is are there other vampires? Who is this guy? And it's like, so that was like, um, but anyway, so so you talk about how you have this wide range of work and you've been doing this for a while and you have a lot of, you know, inspirations from films that you watch filmmakers and cinematographers. Um, is there anybody that you hope to work with one day on not, or, you know, it could be indie, you know, indie world or major budget, you know, world stuff. Is there like somebody who you're like, I would love to work with this person because they've been huge in my career and uh, me growing up or just, just any type of inspiration? Yeah, man, I, uh, I mean, I just, I think in terms of horror specifically, um, I look at people like Mike Flanagan and I'd really love to I'm, I think some of his work is hit or miss for me, but I'd really love to continue working around directors that are pushing themselves the way I think he does. Um, I think he is the type of director that, you know, has come from low budget indie. I think he crowdfunded one of his first films and then, you know, is unstoppable right now. <laughs> and it's just, you know, producing so much quality horror content. You know, again, whether or not it's yeah. hit or miss just to make good stuff and get it out there and continue to get the world like buying your product over and over that's that's an accomplishment in that genre for sure you know you talked about the witch and baba duke and those are some of my favorite movies man those are those movies are dark uh and they're 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 beautifully lit and the scores are great and uh hereditary like all, yeah. all these great movies are just coming out right now and Honestly, that's inspired me as well to want to uh, to make you know things darker and try to be more creative. We're kind of just swamped right now with all these you know bullshit Blumhouse remakes and shit and all scripts. Sorry if you've worked with them or anything, uh, but like yeah, no, I watch you know films like that that are very original and and of course we have to pay homage to the things we grew up on like the Twilight Zone and you know those you know Texas Chainsaw Massacre and just pay respects to all those other things too. But yeah, you're right. There is a whole new kind of style of filmmaking right now and uh it's kind of great to try to you know to watch them and see what they're doing i love watching documentaries on all those things too like you all still buy the blu-rays and instead of watching the films i'm like i want to watch these bonus features and the commentaries and you know just see what they have to say about it it's, right um so you know you've, you've been a gaffer you're doing uh cinematography now is there anything else that you would like to try uh, you want to you know take a shot at you know being a director or an actor or a producer or have you already done some of those things but like, like as far as a career do you have any interest in doing uh, any other roles yeah it, i think you know really 
the reason I even got into gaffing was to become a better DP. Um, g and cool. was not where I started. I moved into it just because I knew I wanted to have, you know, uh, as much control of lighting as possible to be the kind of cinematographer I wanted to be. Um, so gaffing was always, it, you know, it was something I found, found and fell in love with and I still love doing, you know. Um, but really for me, I think a lot of what I love about film is, is visual storytelling. Um, and so I, uh, I think the point is, uh, yes, I do like directing. Um, it's something I think is fun on the side. I don't see myself as the type of person that's always trying to tell a straightforward narrative. So I don't want to be a director by trade. Um, I think I will always love directing stuff on the side. Um, recently I've got a few projects that I've been doing and that's one of the nice things about being slowed down is I can just stop and like look at a project right like I'm not just I'm, absolutely I don't have four films in my head that I'm on and all of a sudden you know it's like <laughs> oh, I'll get this thing without any guilt man you know like yeah uh, yeah so that's been nice uh and I you know um I'll continue I think I'll always want to direct just as a hobby on the side or something that you know it might be a little bit bigger than a hobby at times but it's at the end of the day, I want to be a tradesman in cinematography. <laughs> you know, that's the... Yeah, absolutely. Just focusing on your craft and just becoming better and better at it, whether it's, you know, watching films or watching the documentaries or commentaries or watching things on YouTube, just listening to other cinematographers talk. Like, there's so much you can do with this time to just learn and learn and just get better at things you're doing. And to even, you know, look at other things. You talk about other scripts that you're directing um for writing and you know gives you time to you know to do all that too so there's so much out there uh for filmmakers of no matter what you do to to just learn from and experience and sit down and you because you have that now and yep. so i definitely tell anybody to whether it's quarantined or lockdown or even if you have some free time if you're on you know freelance production or whatever if you got some time always you know, think about what you want to do and just focus on that and really yeah. learn that craft. Um, so when you are on set, uh, those opportunities, you can just, you can nail it and, you know, you know what you're doing and, you know, I don't know. There's my motivational speech for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, Okay, well, where can people find you? Where can people kind of keep track of the cool things you're doing? Uh, IMDb, Facebook, Instagram. Are you on, uh, what's that new thing called? Uh, TikTok. I don't even know. TikTok. <laughs> Started TikTok this week, kids. No. Um, uh, where, where can we find you and kind of keep track of your cool films and things you got going on? Best place to find me is 3D Alchemist on Instagram, at 3D Alchemist. Um, yeah, that's the best place to find me. I mean, I'm... My work's out there, you know. Oh, and you have some some uh, photography work that you put on there, too. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My website's on there, too, huh. so you can definitely check all that stuff out, too. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit. Thank you, brother. And talking about the film, and uh, hopefully, you know, some, some future cinematographer can be watching this and be like, I got inspired from Ken Whitting, so. Maybe. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. Awesome, all right, bro. dude. Well, thanks again. Yeah, man. Take it easy. Stay safe.